So in cyclopentane, the idea is very similar, except there we don't have the problem of angle strain. So we can really get down and dirty and see how much energy is contributed by eclipsing strain. So cyclopentane, the five carbon cycloalkane, I'll just kind of draw it down here in the lower left, looks like that. And again, as I said before, it's the fact that those two end carbons are tied together that leads to the eclipsing strain. So those two hydrogens can bump into one another, and those two hydrogens can bump into one another. And I'll give you a second to think about what you might think the destabilization due to eclipsing strain is. So knowing that the destabilization in going from propane to cyclopropane is about 27 kilocalories per mole, and we have eclipsing strain there, knowing that for cyclobutane it's about 26.4, and again we have eclipsing strain in cyclobutane, and knowing that it's present in cyclopentane, think about what the value might be in terms of eclipsing strain. So I'll give you a second to think about that. And if you came up with a number around 5 kilocalories per mole, then you have a pretty good sense of energies in organic chemistry. So 5 kilocalories per mole, not a huge difference, so there's not a huge stability difference between cyclopentane and open chain pentane. But it is substantial, and we can potentially harness that, for instance, for ring opening reactions of cyclopentane. All right, so that's what I'm going to talk about now, how we can harness ring strain to our advantage. So what you're looking at on this slide are a couple of resonance structures that show us what we can do to cycloalkanes that are strained to stabilize them. So the top example here I have written addition reactions. From this resonance structure, you can see that if we break apart cyclopropane heterolytically, meaning if we break a bond and give both electrons in the bond over to one of the carbons, then we end up with a resonance structure that looks like this. And it's not, of course, a traditional resonance structure. It's by no means a good resonance structure in terms of the criteria we talked about in Chapter 1. But it is a resonance structure nonetheless. And it shows us a lot about cyclopropane's reactivity. So for instance, a compound that wants electrons, an electrophile, can react with the negative lone pair and form a bond. And a compound that can donate electrons can react with the positive end. That's called a nucleophile, a compound that can donate electrons, can react with the positive end to open the cyclopropane and form an open chain molecule that looks something like this. On one end we have the electrophile and then the three carbons of the cyclopropane followed by the nucleophile. And so what we've essentially done is we've added the electrophile nucleophile bond, if they both come from the same molecule, which they can and often do in additions to cyclopropanes, across the cyclopropane bond. And we've opened it up and that introduces 20 six kilocalories per mole of stabilization to the resulting product, at least, right? Because we have broken apart that very unstable cyclopropane ring. We can do a similar thing to cyclobutane, and I just wanted to show here at the bottom hydrogenation of cyclobutane. Hydrogenation is a similar idea, where instead of adding just a generalized electrophile nucleophile bond, specifically we're looking at the addition of H2 across this bond. So the single bond can go towards the positive charge, the negative charge can attack one of the hydrogens, and from that we'll end up with the open chain form of butane, which is a molecule that we're seeing once again and we've already seen multiple times before in the course. So, and again, in this case, intra, uh, introducing that hydrogen will open the ring and release the strain energy. So this is a very favorable process thermodynamically. When we get to chapter four, we'll talk about reaction coordinate diagrams that illustrate the energy progress of reactions as a function of the reaction progress, or what's called the reaction coordinate in more formal terms. And if you look at reaction coordinate diagrams for reactions of very strained molecules like cyclopropane, what you'll see is a very downhill 
fall in energy from reactants to products. The difference in energy is largely due to the release of strain that, that takes place when we replace a strained ring with a relatively unstrained and stable open chain system.